All right, I've been promising to make this video for quite a while now. And I'm gonna, this one is about knife sharpening, how I sharpen my knives. So I'm squinting up at the camera with that bright sun trying to get the best light. But uh, I've asked dozens of guys how they do it and I've, I've done it probably a whole lot, well, several different ways. I've used uh, soft, like a soft Arkansas stone. I've used, uh, I've used a flat file, like a little mill file, and I've used a chainsaw file. I've used, shut up, chicken. I've used a buffing wheel, and I like a buffing wheel a lot, but it's easy to get the steel too hot, and so then if it's, when it gets hot, you almost get it too hard, it feels like. And if you're real careful and, and keep them cool, that's fine. Or if you only use a buffing wheel, but it's it's hard for me to go from a buffing wheel back to a, just like a diamond hone or something. And this is more or less what I've been, this diamond hone like this. I think I ordered this off of Amazon for about $12. That's uh, what I've been using mostly for several years now. And I just find it to be the easiest, most convenient. And uh, shooting on the racetrack, I don't, I don't have a big stone well body or... Uh, I don't have a trailer anymore. I mean, I've pretty much run out of my truck. So this just makes it easy. I don't have to worry about having a balder buffer, which would be handy to have for a lot of other reasons, but I've just never been, never had to. I use the angle grinder and the trusted little gooseneck vice if I need to. And uh, one guy I, I used to w work around in West Virginia shoot a lot of horses, and I think one of the reasons he was able to do so many it was that he kept his stuff so sharp and he he had a pretty cool system he had a briefcase with about 30 or 40 knives i think in that briefcase and he would use those halversons those little uh, short short bladed halverson knives and he would you know every few days he would just or even maybe every day i don't know but he would go home and he had a, a buffing wheel in the shop and he'd get them all shaved and sharp and he would use one for Maybe a horse or maybe two, you know, maybe not even a whole horse, depending on how dirty it was. And, and he would he would just take that, put that knife back in the box and grab a new one or a fresh one. And he kept, and that, it's kind of hard to, it's kind of hard to emphasize how much wear and tear that saves on your body, I believe, over the course of years. And especially someone like him that was, that might have been doing eight or ten every day, you know. And I've had my stretches of working hard like that but I've never been one that I've always liked to keep it down to a dull roar maybe do five or six is my prime number <laughs> they call me I guess I got a little lazy streak in me anyway this is how this is how the best way that I've found to do it basically that for me works for me and I've had a lot of guys ask how you keep your knife sharp a lot of times mine will be pretty stay pretty good and I'll keep them touched up but basically the, the whatever method you use the main thing is to be consistent in your angle and just learn how to stay on that same angle. And it doesn't matter if you use a stone or whatever else. If you can do it like that, then it, it uh, that's how you get the best outcome. <laughs> and some days, and if you're doing it by hand, then it's like it's like a practice. Like I, I made that video a while ago about, about knife sharpening. I didn't actually say how I sharpened my knife. I was just talking more about the technique of or how, how much it helps me at like starting out just to, to realize how to relax and realize where I'm tense sometimes because if I, if I start to sharpen a knife and it's not going right then I realize well I'm, maybe I'm tense in my shoulder if it's something or my legs hurting or wherever I'm sore and it, it lets me kind of uh, regroup a little bit and, and have a better frame of mind uh, not to sound like a, some kind of weird then art of archery kind of deal but it really does help me so <clears throat> keep that in mind if you if you want or don't but I will hold it like about like this and just run a I mean I'll run an angle I'll try to keep it an it's hard to say depending on the knife and how thick the how thick the blade is Th these have a fairly thick blade especially when it's been worn down as much as that you know as it gets as it gets older, this knife has been around for, I've had it around for, shoot, probably three or four years. That's a good thing about these diamond hones. You don't use them up. You don't use your knives up. But 
I don't know if that's a 20 degree angle or what it is, but you just kind of have to find it yourself. And uh, now I'm getting concentration induced tremors thinking about this being on, on the internet forever. But something like that. And then I always keep it flat. A lot of times, too, I'll, I'll find a stall door I can rest my knife on and keep it completely still. And I always run it flat on the back. And I've seen, I've seen guys put a bevel on this side, too, and you can do that. Uh, to me, it just stays more consistent this way, and that way you're... Your hand will get you used to it the way the way it cuts, and you never have to. You're never kind of guessing. But uh, years ago, when I first got on the racetrack, I, I bought a lot of those Halverson knives, and I sharpened because my mentor that got me on the track. This is what he did, so I did it. And he he'd get those Halverson knives and a like a flat mill file, and he would and he would use that mill file on them every day, and then he would have, almost get a bevel on this side with that file, and it it works out really well, but those Halverson knives were $35, $40. I don't remember how much they were at the time, but dang sure you could go, you could go through one in a month, you know, if you sharpened it a lot. So uh, I kind of got away from doing that. And now the only thing is, is the reason I have this, this gooseneck, I, this other knife, which is a lot newer, you can't probably, I don't know if you can see it in this video or not with this light, but I've got a little hump right there where my, where my diamond, my diamond stone was falling off and it kind of made a little divot where I'm having trouble getting it sharp right there. So whenever I get out of hand like that, I'll put them in my, put them in my vise. And then I will use a file right here in order to get it back to kind of back to where it needs to be. And just real carefully try to use the whole file. Don't drag it back. I learned that <laughs> files are not meant to go this way. You're not supposed to saw. They only they only go forward, at least certain kinds of files. I think there's a bastard file might be backwards. I can't remember. I don't remember which one it, which one it is, but and I only do this I don't like I say I used to sharpen them with a the file every day and you just wear knives out so fast. You know, and using the pretty much only the the uh, diamond home, then I'm able to make these knives last a lot longer. And I like these Jerry Paul knives. They're about 50 bucks, or they used to be. And uh, so every now and then, I'll, if if I kind of if I my sharpening hand is not too steady and I kind of get out of line and they're not they're just not getting real sharp, I'll go back with a with a chainsaw file. I believe this is a 532 chainsaw file. And the same thing, I'll get the same angle and, and try to be as straight as I can. Mainly what I'm working on here is that one little spot where I was, where I wasn't hitting it just right. Get it back in line with the rest of the, the edge. And that leaves a real sharp, a, a lot rougher uh, surface than, than you get with a diamond home. But over time, if I can keep my hand, if I can kind of, concentrate on it a little bit and, and keep my hand steady. I'll get this line back out with this, with this back to the diamond. And uh, I don't have to have it locked up in there for this. I can, so you can see that real, that real rough edge with the, I don't know if you can see it there or not, but the rough edge with the, from the chainsaw file back to work on it like this. Do it backwards. I know, like I say, I normally put it on a stall door or something, something comfortably high about chest height or waist height. At least this is a little low. Over time, I'll get that I'll get those file marks sharpened out of there, which I don't care about the marks, but it, it makes it makes it drag in the foot more. Almost makes it a little harder to use when you have those big file ridges. 
Then with the file, you're always going to have a pretty good burr on the on the back side right there. So then come back and it's flat. I mean, I try to keep it where it's brushing the whole thing. I know that probably wears out my diamond hone faster. And uh, that's going to be about all in this video. If you're like me and you over, you like to tend to overthink things and a little bit of a perfectionist, then maybe you watched this long and cared about it, and maybe you disagree with something. So why don't you leave me a comment, tell me how you do it. I'm always curious to know how other guys do it. I'm always looking for a easier, better way, I guess. And like this, like I said, this is this is not real efficient the way I've got it on this top of this vice, but I'm trying to do it here where it's in the camera without moving it. So another thing, I got a little bucket of water here to keep this keep this sharpener clean and wet. You can spit on it if you want, but sometimes you have to in a pinch. And I never worried about getting them just razor, razor sharp, but I like them pretty sharp. I believe there's another video on YouTube. I maybe I'll try to link to it if I can find it. And I think it's uh, uh now I'm drawing a blank on who on who it is that runs a horseshoeing school in Missouri. I think it's him that made a made a video on knife sharpening, and it's pretty good. And they talk about the actual angle, you know, the technically the the number <laughs> number of degrees that you're shooting for. And uh, I took some from that video and kind of put it in with my with my philosophy I think they probably get them they probably do a little better at sharpening but what, what I do works for me so and if this is different than you do it it's worth a try and uh, I'd sure love to hear from you tell me what I could be doing better or how <laughs> I'm probably not going to change too much but I think you're open to it if it, if it works for me And this old diamond hone has been around a little while, so I'm really about time for a new one. Anyway. That's, that's about it. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. That's all she wrote.